Hi, I'm Nick at SideView, and this is Cooking with SideView, Episode 3. If you don't know what SideView is or what SideView Utils is, come to the site at sideviewapps.com. If you're still watching, I assume you know what we're about, and for this particular episode, I need to assume that you're pretty familiar with the Splunk UI and the Advanced XML2, meaning you've either read through all the SideView Utils docs and built a few dashboards and views yourself, or you're just an old hand at Splunk and you've built dashboards using the Advanced XML syntax and the core Splunk modules. Today we're going to dive in and look at the side view editor. This is a new feature in side view utils 2.0 and it's a pretty cool one. With the editor you can create and edit advanced XML dashboards and views without hand typing the XML. No more looking for closing param tags. There is an introduction page but since you've got me here talking let's just dive right in. All right what are we looking at here? Let's go through this interface panel by panel. At the top we see that the editor has opened up the view called example view inside the SideView Utils app. So we can open up any view in any app. We also see that we're in edit mode. The other modes are add, delete, and reattach. Okay. The upper left panel. Here's where you'll always have form fields of some kind and often an interaction prompt telling you what to do. Here it's telling us to select a module. We don't quite know what that means yet. Moving on, top right panel. This is the schematic view. We can drag this around and we can click on modules. Uh, that's what this thing is saying. It's saying choose a module to edit. If we click on this HTML module. Hey, look at that. We're editing it. Okay, let's move on. Whenever you see a module with a red or a pink shade, though, that's a cue that the module has other downstream modules below that are not shown. So if we click on this time range picker, you'll see it's a little pink. Indeed, it opens up and it has other modules underneath. Likewise, the pager module is hiding a simple results table below. Okay, bottom right. This is the view itself. You can think of it as a preview, but it's, it's really just a whole copy of the view jammed in here. You can interact with it a little to select your modules, but it's, it's more there to help you orient as you're editing things and move around as you're moving around in the schematic. Finally, on the bottom left, this panel is always going to try and show us contextual help. And that's it. That's the panels. Let's edit something. How about this search module? You may have grokked from the view here. This page is just a simple example. It has a time range picker. It's just going to run a search and then show us some source types and a little simple statistic. Okay. We're editing the search module. Here we have the search. Okay. We see this first pull down though is telling us that we're only seeing params that are currently set to something. Okay. Well, let's expand that and see all available params on the search module, not just the ones that are set. Okay. You see there's quite a few params that we're not actually using on this module. Maybe you knew about them, maybe you didn't. Either way, now you can see what they are. And then furthermore, as we tab through these fields, we're given contextual help about what all these params are and when we would want to use them. You can see the contextual help here is always filling in as I change around from param to param. So let's say we wanted to come in here and add one more statistic to this table. You can see it's doing sum of KB, but let's, let's say we wanted to look at the max events per second as well. If you're familiar with the, metric, the Splunk metrics log, you may, you may know that you would do max EPS here. Let's say that you knew how to do that. Submit query. Look at that. Max EPS. Added. We never had to edit the advanced XML. Let's say we want to edit this header as well. So we want to say statistic for 23 source types found. Okay, submit query. There we go. We edited the header as well. That was easy. Okay, now we want to, let's say we want to turn on drill down for this table. Obviously this table you're seeing here that has no redirector module inside it. So it's just a, it's just an interact, you know, flat table. So first, just to keep it simple, take a baby step. We're going to switch the mode to add. But we're first just going to add an HTML module underneath so that when we click on the table, it's just going to, it's going to tell us what we clicked on. Kind of silly example, but you can put any module inside any other module. So let's just be silly. We'll edit our simple results or we'll add a new module below the module I just clicked on and let's make it a HTML module and we'll leave that. So now we're editing a new module and we'll just tell the user have just clicked on the click.fields.series source type uh, showing EP 
yes of click dot fields dot max EPS. Long-time users of SideView Utils will notice that this old syntax, very familiar, much, much easier to use. And you can edit, you can reference any of the fields in the table, not just the first one. Submit that, and now indeed, we have an interactive table. Oh wait, one more thing. We have to tell the we have to tell the table module to turn on drill down. It's off by default. So set drill down to row. Okay. Incidentally, if you set a value that's not a legal value for a param, the editor will actually tell you that. It goes and parses the module comp files and figures out what the legal values are. So anyway, now you can see the links in the table are they're links, they're, they're blue. So in theory, we have an interactive table here. Hey, look at that. You have just clicked on the LSOF source type, which was showing a max EPS of 0 0.033055. Okay, it worked. It's a very silly example. We just, you know, told the user something they already knew. So let's delete that. Choose a module to delete. I just put the mode into delete and it now says choose a module to delete and we're going to delete our HTML module that we just created. Boom, it's gone. Now we go back to add mode. Again, I want to add a module below the simple results table. This time let's make it a redirector. Now, if, you're, if you've read through the URL loader and redirector docs inside the utils, what I'm about to do is going to look somewhat familiar. And um, so we want, it, we want the user to be taken to the side view report builder when they click on a row in this table. We want it to pass the selected source type as the search term. So redirector, you do most of your, well, the, the URL is, of course, report. That is the, the, the view name of the report builder. And we have to add a couple args.star params. We have to remember to pass on the time range that the user was, was using here. And we have to, of course, there's the latest as well. And well, of course, there's the search itself. As you know from using side view utils, you always use search bar instead of queue. And what do we want to do? We wanted to do source type equals, and then our old friend click dot fields. And again, you should recognize this from the drill down docs. This is just saying. Click is the default prefix of the table. Fields is saying, I want to look through the fields of the, of the table. And series, you can see that here. It's just the column name. And you have to also remember, set auto run to true. And that's it. All this other stuff, we can read about it if you want. Um, Redirector has a lot of other pretty fancy uh, capabilities on it. But we're just going to submit this as it is, a very simple drill down example. And that's it. Now let's test out our modified view in a new window. If we, if we do it here, it'll, it'll take us out of the editor. Here's our example view. Let's reload it to pick up our new changes. Dun, dun, dun. Ready? Let's look at source type equals app tracker. Look at that. Side view report builder, source type equals app tracker. It used the exact absolute time range that the table had just rendered. And it works great. So that's a quick demo of the side view editor. Download the 90-day trial of SideView Utils today and check it out. Pricing for the app depends a bit on your current Splunk license size, so if you're interested in purchasing, send an email to info at sideviewapps.com or submit the contact form on the SideView site. Send in the size of your current Splunk license and we will get you a quote. Thanks for watching. Check out the site at sideviewapps.com and check out back for more screencasts soon.